Shri Radha Rasa Ki Jai, Prabhu Nanda Saraswati Ki Jai. So today is uh, June twenty second. Sorry, twenty second. June 22nd, and this is the fifth class, chapter on verse 41 of Radharas Sudhanidhi. And the shloka is um, obviously is something about Radha's service. And uh, the title of this verse is Desiring Radha's Maid Service, or to be her, the desire, cultivating the desire to be her servant. And this is a verse. Purnanuragara samurti tadilatabham jyoti param bhagavato rati madrahasyam yat pradurasati kripa kripaya vrishabhano gehe syat kinkari bhavatum eva mamabilasha. The translation. I only desire to be the maid servant of that supreme effulgence who is the very form of passionate transcendental love. That Radha shines like a vine of lightning strikes, lightning bolts. That Radha is the only abode of Sri Krishna's divine, intimate love. And that Radha mercifully appeared in the house of Maharaj Prashabhanu. So this is, of course, about he's aspiring to, for Radha's service, then that's his, then he's glorifying Radharani. Basically, many of these verses are about Radha Gun. Radhagun Kirtan or Radhagun Kavi. Kavi means, it's more accurate, Kavi means poetry. It's not Kirtan, it's poetry. Kavi, Krishnadas Kaviraj. So you want to serve someone who's great. You want to serve someone who's wonderful, loving, kind, beautiful, generous, charitable, compassionate. Someone who is very attractive and very loving and compassionate, then you want to associate with them. And, of course, you want to please them, maybe so they will bless you or be kind to you or share their love with you or be compassionate or charitable towards you and give you a favor or give you some mercy or give you some money. So then you may offer yourself for service with the idea that I'll give myself, but I would like something. I would like to serve you, and please, I, please give me the opportunity to serve you. And what I want is the charity of your eternal service. The Dharana Janana Sundaram. I don't want money or, or wealth or power or strength or beauty or long life or anything that everyone wants. I simply want to serve you and love you. That's my. That's why I'm approaching you. That's why I'm surrendering to you. So this is the bhav, the mood of Sripad Prabodhananda Saraswati and this mandri bhav, kinkari bhav. The word kinkari is there. It means mandri. So he's glorifying. Why? Why should this person be served? Well, because they're have all these qualities, which we'll hear about, word for word, line for line. Now, this is another translation. Purna anuraga rasamurti tadir latavam choti param bhagavato rati madrahasyam yat pradurasti kripaya brishabhanu gehe syat kinkari bhavitam eva Mama Abhilasha. This is another translation. Srimati Radhika is the personification of complete loving attachment. 
So this is the this person's translation of the phrase porn the first line porna anuraga rasamurti porna anurag anurag means like we say raganuga bhakti anuga anugata anugata means to follow so the rag anugata those sadakas those devotees that are practicing bhakti bhajan following the rag rag means color and the, the word in hindi rag means color like well rung actually they say rung what color rung what rag means attachment intense attachment so rag an, anuga like the ragatmikas you must have heard this term the radharani and the sakis and manjaris Ananda Baba and Sridam Subal Raktak Patrak and the different Stairatis and different Mukya Rasas of Braj, they have their entire being Rag Atmika. Atmika Atma means body, mind, words, thinking, feeling, willing, everything about me and everything I'm made of and everything I want is called Atmika. So their atmika is made of rag, which means intense loving attachment. For whom? One to be attached means that one object is connected to another object. That that's how we say that it's attached. Uh, man marries a woman, become married, so they become attached by that relationship. The, the proximity of hearts or the proximity of space. And creates attachment. So this is an intense, loving, transcendental attachment. It's called ragatmika. And all the brijbasis. So if someone wants to follow a brijbasi, braja loka anusarata, Rupa Goswami says in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu that when we develop ruchi and attraction and taste for braj lila and for the braj brajajan, the associates of Krishna Vrindavan. Then we want to hear about them. We want to uh, think like them and serve like them and associate with them and, and ultimately attain their eternal service and association of Krishna and Balaram, or Radha and Krishna, or Malaya Shoda and Nanda, and the different Stai Ratis, Vatsalya Rati, or Sakya, or Madhur. So then we follow those ragatmikas. So those that are following the ragatmika janas of Braj are called Raganuga Bhaktas. And there's Vaidhi Sadhana. There's two types of sadhana, Vaidhi Sadhana and Raganuga Sadhana. It's not that one graduates. It's not like you go to high school and you do... Because even if you go to high school, it's not guaranteed you'll go to college because you have to... Enter. You have to pass the entrance examinations. And even if you go to college, it's not guaranteed you'll get a degree. You may enroll and pay your tuitions and go to class and flunk, fail, not pass the grade. Or may quit and join a spiritual movement. Or run away on a holiday or whatever. So it's not a guarantee that you join, you start at one level, you automatically go to the next. You have to endeavor, you have to pass the grade, you have to qualify, you have to qualify to enter college. No, if I go to high school automatically, I go to college. No, <laughs> you, if you don't attend any classes in high, you know, secondary school or whatever you call it, I don't know, high, then you don't qualify. So same thing with Vaidhi Sadhan. It's not that simply by hearing and chanting and worshiping the deities and going on Sankirtan and, and preaching and take, raising the f family as devotees and being a devotee, of course, that's very good. That's Vaidhi Sadhana. But it's not, a, it's not a given. It's not guaranteed that, oh yes, after three years or two years or, or 20 years, I will, uh, this will, Vaidhi Sadhana will turn into Raghunuga Bhakti. Vaidhi Sadhana will become Raghunuga Sadhana. No way. It doesn't happen. And people may say that, they may say, well, that's the advanced stage of Vaidhi Sadhana. But it's not like that. Because Rupa goes, Vishnachakavarti Thakur, 
Rupa Goswami doesn't make that distinction of the eligibility. He says if one has lobha, greed, that lobha or greed to follow the Rigatmika Janas, the eternal associates of Krishna Vrindavan, may appear at any stage at one's spiritual life, in the very, very beginning. And it may not appear. After 20, 30 years of Vaidhi Bhakti, one may have no idea about Raganuga and no idea about the Ragatmikas, no interest or attraction or the slightest idea of what it is. And if he has any idea, it's usually wrong. <laughs> and if he hears about someone that may be following that line of sadhana, then he criticizes or, or condemns them, which <laughs> doesn't promote his cause towards advanced practices of bhakti by making Vaishnava Parad. So this is following in their footsteps. So Radharani is rag, porna, porna, pornano raga rasamorti tadil latabam. She's the personification, the morti, the personification of ras, rasamorti, a porna rag. Radhika is the personification of complete loving attachment. This is very clear. Pornana raga rasamorti tadil latabam. And then this phrase, tadil latabam, it means, uh, like we say, if you're familiar with a famous prayer by Shankara Mahadev, Lord Shiva, Radha Kripa Kataksha Stavaraj, says the Kripa Kataksha Bhajanam, Munindra, uh, like there's prayers there, and one of them says, Tadit Suvarna Champaka Pratiptagora Vigre. Describing Radharani's rupam, her divine, beautiful, transcendental form, says that Tadit Savarna Champaka, that her body is so effulgent, and so we say Tapta Kanchana Gorangi, everyone knows. That Gorangi, Radha, her body, her anga, anga means her arms, legs, neck, chest, body, everything, her anga, her body, her limbs, are Gora. Fair, fair and golden and shiny and effulgent and like molten gold or melted gold so that's we know but also uh, Shiva is describing Radharani's Taditsivarna Champaka that he, he can't decide having had darshan of Radharani when he was in the form of Gopishwar Lord Shiva the Rasa dance, he had Sakshad Darshan of Radharani. And he saw, if you see someone very clearly, then, and you have a good memory, you may be able to describe them. So he saw Radharani and he saw her complexion, her skin tone, transcendental body is. What is the tone of that? What is that color? So he said, well, it's like lightning. She's glowing and radiant, like lightning in the, in the sky. Tadit, Tadit. But then she's also Suvarna. She's like Suvarna. She's like thousands and thousands of kilos of gold shining and, and, and heavy with this golden effulgence of Prem, the Sringhar Rati, Ujvala, Sringhar Ujvala Ras. Tap, then he says, Tadit Suvarna Champak. Because there are different types of champak. There's a red color champak flower. There's a blue color champak flower. There's a white champak flower with yellow in the middle. There's also a golden yellow champak flower, which is available in Bengal and also in Bombay side, tropical side. And it's not quite shaped like an ordinary champak flower, but it's in the category, in the, in the species and genus was called Champak, and a very beautiful flower. In Indian literature, the Champak flower, it's a tree, the flower grows on a tree. The Champak is called the, uh, the, mandir, the mandir tree, the mandir flower, the mandir pushpa. It's practically everywhere. Uh, you find Champak flowers growing everywhere in India, one variety or another. So the Champak flowers are always associated with mandirs or temples, and flowers to offer to Krishna. So he says, Suvarna Champak, that Radharani's golden complexion, her lightning-like golden complexion, is also like, is also the color of 
a golden chump, the petals of a golden chumpak flower. So it's a mixture of lightning, taditsu, and gold, and a chumpak flower. All those kind of yellow gold hues mixed together. You know, the soft, the softness, the soft glow of the golden champak flower and the brilliant gold, brilliant glow and glow and rut effulgence and radiance. So this word is here. Purnana raga rasamorti tadil latavam. So tadil means tadit, means lightning. Then lata, everyone knows madavi lata, madavi malata, malati lata. These are creepers. I go up the trees, they go around trees like this, or they go up walls like we have outside. Going up some ropes and they make, they make their way up to the roof and give fragrance throughout the temple and ashram. They're Madhavi Latas and Malati Latas. And they're very much part of Krishna's Lila. In the Lalita's Kunj at Radhakund, there's the Madhavi Mandap. There's a Madhavi Mandap and the Malati Mandap. So the Madhavi Mandap, we have these Madhavi Latas here on the wall and also on going up to Ashram. So Madhavi, very fragrant flower and special flower because Madhavi blossoms at night and gives such a nice fragrance. So they have entire mandaps. Mandaps means a, a, small, a raised area. A mandap means like a platform, a raised place to sit. It's like a, a wealthy person's garden house or in the middle of a garden you may have a small house. There's some, like, I, if you want to know some idea of, of it, in the MVT in Vrindavan, in the middle of that garden, if you go there, there's so many apartments. There's one stone, looks like, looks like a chatri. It's a round, round dome of red sandstone, and it's shaped maybe in eight sides, and there's seats inside, and it has little walls and open, open sides. And you walk in there, and people sit there and chant chop and look at the garden, if you've ever seen so that's something like a mandap, uh, a stone mandap. But in Brajlila, everything is forests and flowers and vines and natural, it's fragrant and beautiful. Everything's soft and nice. So this is Madhavi. Purnana Raga Rasamurti Tadil Latabam. So Radharani is, a, she's an aura of lightning creepers. Jyoti Param Bhagavato Rati Mad Rahasyam. Jyoti Param means that Radharani is another quality of Radharani. She's Jyoti Param. Jyoti, everyone knows, everyone knows Brahma Jyoti. Brahma Jyoti. Jyoti means very, very effulgent. Radharani is very effulgent. She's a, she's a Param, at the topmost level, the highest level of effulgence. Radharani. She's the topmost effulgence of effulgences. And Bhagavato Rati Madrahasyam. And why is she so brilliant? Why is Radharani so effulgent? So she's like a jyoti, you know, brilliant, like the sunlight in the daytime. You look, you can't look at it. It's so brilliant. At 12 o'clock, it's shining on your head. You have to wear sunglasses. That's jyoti, that's his effulgence. But Radharani's jyoti is not burning or or hurting the eyes, but very, very brilliant and radiant and attractive and gentle rays. The difference between the sun in India and the 12 o'clock in the summer afternoon and 12 o'clock in the winter in January. And in winter you'll stand at 12 o'clock and look at the sun and feel so good. The same sun planet, but a very and the same effulgence, the same jyoti, surya jyoti, surya kiran. And you'll feel nice, you'll feel soothed, and you'll feel energized, and, and strength, and, and, and heat coming into your bones, and eyes, and face. That's Radharani's effulgence. Energizing, and soothing, and radiant, like the winter sun, not like the summer sun. Summer sun, you stand there, and blinds your eyes, and burns your skin. And, and melts your very existence. You run away and hide somewhere. But that's the funny, po uh, humorous point of, it seems a little humorous. In North India, in the winter, everyone's standing in the, everywhere you look, someone's standing in the sunshine. Everyone's standing in the sunshine in the morning time or any time. 
and avoiding all shade and cool places. And then in the summer, everyone's hiding under the trees and standing in the shade. And it's the same sun planet. So Radharani has a Jyoti Param. But then you say, why? What makes, what makes Radharani so transcendentally effulgent? And then Sripad gives the clue. Bhagavato Rati Madhurhasyam. You must be knowing, if you're very, very happy over anything, you got some reward or you got some promotion or you found a great friend or you fell in love or you, whatever, then you feel, when you feel happy in heart and joyful in mind, then that's very good for health. Happiness is a very good medicine. <laughs> Uh, a happy person is a healthy person. And someone who's sick and dying and still happy, that means he's transcendental. Because the transcendentalist, the spiritualist, is not affected by the dualities of the body. Matra sparshasta konteya shitosh na shukadukada agama payano nityas tam bharata. He tolerates every thing that happens, good or bad, heat or cold, fame or infamy, poverty or wealth. And he's always in bliss, remembering his Lord and serving his Lord, whether he's healthy or sick. But rather, when generally one is very, very radiant and in a very happy mood and joyful mood and looking very sparkly when they are in love. When they found someone that they really can love and serve and enjoy being with, the heart flushes with joy. Maybe you've had the experience. So when one, so now this is the answer here, Bhagavat Ratimad Rahasyam, that this phrase, Bhagavat Ratimad, means that um, Radharani is the object of affection for Bhagavan. Rati, Rati means attachment, love. Bhav, Rati Mad. So Bhagavan, Bhagavan Sri Krishna, he directs all his Rati, or most all of it, 90% of it. He directs all of his Rati, all of his intense loving attachment to Radharani. He offers his complete heart and everything to Radharani. She is his Praneshwari, Praneshwari Radha. Priyaji Radha. So when Radharani is a recipient of all that unlimited love from Krishna, that she becomes very happy, very joyful, Paramanand, and naturally she becomes Jyoti Param. Jyoti Param Bhagavata Vrati Mad. She, if, if, if you're receiving all the... Imagine, just imagine, if the wealthiest man in the world, the most handsome man in the world, the most famous man in the world, the strongest man in the world, the most renounced man in the world, the most knowledgeable man in the world, was your husband. <laughs> and he was and he's completely in love with you and completely surrendered and dedicated to you. Would you be walking around with a sad face? Would you be crying all the time? No, you'd be happy, happy face. And everyone would say, what makes you so happy? My husband? Why? Because he's the wealthiest man in the world and he's the most handsome man in the world and he's the strongest man in the world. And you, you, I've got it all. So Radharani's beloved is Priyatam Sham. So she's Jyoti Param. So that's why she's so effulgent. And anyone who serves Radharani and serves her beloved Krishna, the devotees become effulgent. Prabhupada was on the plane in... Uh, traveling, preaching. And he met some people on the plane, some regular people, some you know, regular kind of people on the plane traveling. They weren't initiated devotees in this con or whatever. And uh, he, he, uh, the man remarked, he said, I have seen your devotees on the streets of the cities chanting Hare Krishna Kirtan. And they look so bright. They look, their faces look so effulgent and bright. And Prabhupada said, yes, 
the um, they, my disciples are all bright faced. They're very bright faces because they found what they wanted in life. They found true love. They found that my disciples have found true love and true meaning and true value and a true goal to dedicate your entire existence to. So they're very happy about what they've found and they feel very satisfied about what they've found. And so that comes out on their faces as their joy and happiness, so they look effulgent. They're not mad after the things of this world, which most everyone is, and which makes everyone very dark, dull. Uh, so this is, Jyot, this is, of course, transcendental, Radharani's Jyoti Param Bhagavate Ratimat. Then Rahasyam, Rahasyam Yat Pradurasi, Pradurasti, Pradurasti. So this is uh, Yat Pradurasti Kripaya Brishabana Gehi. So Radharani is the most secret of mysteries. <laughs> She's the Rahasyam, Pradurasti. She's the most sec Radharani is the most secret of mysteries. Everyone knows Bhajan Rahasyam. Everyone knows Rahasyam means secret. So yet Praduras, Dur as we've heard before, Dur Gama. Dur means far, difficult. And Pra means Prakrishtarena, means very much far. So Radharani is very far away from everyone and she's very secret. Radharani's relationship with Krishna is very secret, very far away from everyone's mind and understanding. Most people are totally bewildered, confused about the loving relationship of Radha and Krishna. And therefore they reject it, they criticize it, or they don't believe in it, or they don't accept it, for the most part. Indians uh, as a whole, the whole country, most people they prefer to see Krishna as the Kurukshetra Krishna, the, the Sarti, the chariot driver of Arjun the teacher of Bhagavad Gita, or they prefer to see Krishna as a king of Dwarka, Dwarkadish, lawfully married to his queens and protecting the people and killing the demons. They prefer that and they accept that. But the intricate, secret, illicit parakya love affairs of Krishna, Bhagavan, with Radharani, the gopis in Vrindavan, most people reject it. They don't accept it. They don't believe it. And, uh, they, and if they even have some neutral position, they certainly can't understand it. They don't understand. Even Parikshit Maharaj, who actually saw Krishna, he lived 5,000 years ago. He was a great, I don't know, something like a great grandson of Krishna or something, family member. And Parikshit, after he heard about Krishna's Ras Lila, he said, I don't understand. You've been telling me all about the first canto and second canto and third canto, all about Nisringadeva and Vamanadeva and, and Vishnu and, and Ramachandra and all the different avatars and descents of the Lord, Korma, Varaha, Keshavadrita, Keshavadrita, Naraharupa. So many Das avatars and Buddha. You've explained all these nine cantos and all about the Mahima of Bhagavan. And it's very wonderful, and I, I accepted it all, and I'm very inspired. Now you start the tenth canto and told me about Krishna's Bali Lila and his Pogonda Lila, and that's very wonderful and, and funny and joyful and, and very attractive and very very sweet. And now you started telling me about his uh, Kaishor Lila, and you're telling me about st stealing the clothes of Gopi virgins. And then now you're telling about he's dancing with other people's wives and putting his arms on her shoulder and touching their breasts and thighs and embracing and kissing them in the Ras Lila. Then afterwards he, he said, after hearing that, it's in the Bhagavatam, in chapter 33, he said, I, I don't understand. How, how is it that Bhagavan, because throughout the Bhagavatam you've been telling me, and it's also told in Gita, Krishna himself says, Bhagavan says, Yada yada hi dharmasya glanhir bhavati bharata abhutana madharmasya tadatmayam tadatmanyam sujamyam. He says in the fourth chapter of Gita, verse 7 and 8, he describes that 
he comes here to reestablish dharma. That's what Bhagavan Kurukshetra Sart Parthasarati Krishna tells in Gita. But now you're telling that this is the same Krishna in his supreme Madhurya Purushottam form, the Purnatam Bhagavan, the topmost form of Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam that you told me about in first canto. Now you're telling me that he's that he's acting irreligiously and he's breaking all the religious principles. The, the greatest sin Practically the greatest sin that a human being can perform is adultery. It's worse, it's more punishable than murder, according to Mano Samhita and the Vedic uh, laws. So that, because even they have atonements and prayas chitta that one can do for murder, but adultery, <laughs> there's, there isn't any. You have to go to hell and suffer. It's quite a heavy, everywhere the same thing is there, in the Bible and Quran also. So now he's doing that every night, dancing, so I don't understand. So even King, King Parikshit, who is part of Krishna's Leela, <laughs> Krishna saved him in the womb, and even he is bewildered, so Rahasya Yat pradur, Pradurasti, even Krishna is so far, he's it, the secrecies, the Rahasya Leela of Krishna with the gopis, and the Rahasya Braj Leela is Pradurasti. It's very, very far from everyone to understand. So that's why Sripad is glorifying Radharani. These are the Guna, guna Pada or Guna Kavi, verses of glorification of Radharani's transcendental qualities. Like we say, Krishna is Achintya. A quality of Bhagavan Sri Krishna's achintya means achintya. I can't understand. I can't think about it. He, in other words, Krishna is inconceivable. So Radharani is. These are qualities of Radharani. Rahasyam, rahasyam yat pradurasti, pradurasti. Very, very far away. Very, very secret and very, very far away. Even the Brijbasis. During Krishna's Leela, Boma Vrindavan and Prakat Leela, they had some idea, Jatila and Yashoda, they had some idea that maybe Krishna is meeting with my daughter in law, maybe Krishna is meeting with the gopis, but they didn't really know. It was such a rahasya, such a secret, even his own mother didn't know. And people, they would, the older gopis would sometimes rebuke Krishna and call him a call him a black snake and call him a, a kapat and lumpat and dort. They would call him bad names, but they could never, they didn't have any proof. He never got caught in the act. <laughs> so it's very secret. So what to speak of Radharani? Then, so that's yet brother Asti, Kripaya, Kripaya, Rishubha. That being said that Radharani is so amazing, she's Purna, Purnana Raga, Purnana Raga Rasamurti Tadil, Latabam, Jyoti Param, Bhagavato Rati Madhurasyam. That one person, that one gopi, Radharani, is a recipient of all the love of God. And she's the greatest worshipper of God. And I'm I'm aspiring and I'm desiring to become her servant. How extraordinary. So he's saying, Kripaya, Kripaya Brishubano Gehe. Kripya Prashabano Gehe. This means she ap and uh, she mercifully, out of her mercy, out of Radharani's mercy, Kripa, she's Gehe. Gehe, Gehe means Griha, means house. Out of her own mercy, Radharani has appeared in the house of Prashabano. So these lines of this verse are describing. Radharani's qualities and her actions and basically her qualities and her birth. Janma karma chameda yam yam like that in the Bhagavad Gita. So here we heard so many nice qualities and we heard that she she took birth in Brishabhanu's house out of her mercy. For whom? For Brishabhanu, but for all of us also. <laughs> if Radharani had not come to this world, then where would we be? If Lord Garanga had not come to this world, where would, you, where would we be? 
And if our Gurudev had not come to our into our lives and saved us, where would we be? There's one bhajan like this, glorifying Lord Garanga. I forget who it's by. Maybe Narahari Sarkar it says, Yadihi, Yadihi na gora hoito. He says, Yadihi, Yadihi na gora hoito. It's nice, very beautiful Bengali bhajan. And the theme and the meaning of that bhajan is, where would we be? We means the human beings on the earth planet, or the whole universe for that matter. Where would we be if Garanga had not come into this Kali Yuga? We'd be lost. Just imagine. You, and this was 500 years ago, he wrote this bhajan. And there's so many other verses I forget, but the basic theme was, where would we be without Garanga? And we can ask ourselves that also. Where would we be without Goranga and Goranga's servants, the Vaishnavas? Sadhu Kripa, and that's a song by Naratam Das, he sings it, Sadhu, Bina, Sadhu Kripa Bina. Without the mercy of the sadhus, we're nothing, we're nowhere. So where would we... Sometimes it's nice to think about, to meditate, if you're an initiated devotee, and you have a guru, Sri Guru, and we become a little complacent or a little forgetful. Our nature is like that. This is the conditioned nature of the jivas in this world. We forget, and we forget all the good we received. We forget all the kindness that we receive from others, like parents and friends or teachers along the way. What to speak of it. We even forget the grand unlimited mercy of Sri Gurudev. So it is very helpful for sadhakas to once in a while review their life account. Take account of your life. All right, I've been initiated for 10 years, for five years. Where was I before? And what was I doing before? And what was I thinking? And what was I desiring? And what am I doing now? And what am I thinking now? And what am I desiring now? Surely it will be categorically different, wholesale, in some cases. Not all the way, but there will definitely be some differences, no matter who you are or in what position you were in and are in. And all that change was brought about, all that rectification, all that purification, rectification, redirection, and elevation and liberation was brought about by the mercy of Guru, which means the mercy of Goranga, which means the mercy of Krishna, which means the mercy of Radharani. So the, back to the question, where would we be without the mercy of Radha and Krishna, and Guru and Goranga, and Vaishnavas? So knowing that and remembering that, Sripad He's saying, Kripaya, Kripaya Brishubhano Gehe. Kripaya Brishubhano Gehe. Oh, Radharani Brishubhano Nandini. Out of your mercy, you could also say, out of your mercy, out of your mercy, you came to this world. Because Krishna, there's a Leela when Krishna was deciding to come to this world. He said, listen, Radharani, I'm going to show my pastimes in the material world, and I'm taking Giraj with me. Uh, from the spiritual world, Goloka Vrindavan. I'm taking Giraj with me, I'm taking Jamunaji with me, I'm even taking Brajaraj with me. And uh, many associates were all going to descend, and various demigods are going to join my Braj Leela. We're going to display all of our pastimes there, uh, my pastimes in, in Bharat, in the land of Vrindavan, Brajabhumi to elevate the conditioned souls and to attract them to the happy life of eternal service and loving bliss of myself and Goloka Vrindavan. So you, I'll be back soon. You just wait for me and I'll, I'll expand myself. I'll be here, but I'm going there. So I'll also be here with you and then I'll also go there. She said, wait a minute. I'm not going to stay here alone back in Goloka and you descend to this world, I want to come also. So, all right. So then Radharani came also. So 
where would we be if Radharani had not come and was only Krishna and Vrindavan? Krishna and the coward boys. <laughs> and maybe maybe Krishna and the gopis, but but they would be busy with Krishna and serving him and enjoying him. They wouldn't think too much about us. <laughs> but Radharani, she's also the topmost gopi, but she also came with all the other gopis. But she's always thinking so much of us. Radharani is called Karuna Mai. She's glorified. It's one of her most prominent names. But I, at least myself, I may be wrong. Of course, it, there are maybe some references in different verses. Of course, she is also. I mean, everyone, all devotees are, but I never, generally never hear of Lita Sakhi, Karuna Mai Lalita Sakhi. Although it's also said, Raghunath Das is saying that Lita Sakhi is very merciful. If anyone is in Braj doing bhajan, and trying to attain the service of Radha, then Lita comes and blesses them. There are verses like that. But as a separate, distinct name of Lita, although that's one of her attributes and expressions of compassion for Sadaka is doing Braj Bhajan in Vrindavan, that she will take notice of their sincerity and maybe appear to them or reveal something to them, like Siddha Krishnadas. When he was blind, Lita came to him and cured his blindness, along with Radharani. Well, there are different instances, but generally we, everyone can agree, I believe, that Radharani is known as Krunamayi Radha and glorified. So we're all thankful that Radharani is Kripaya Brishabhano Gehe, that Radharani has appeared in the house of Brishabhano in Barsana, in some kalpas, and some days of Krishna's pastimes, Radharani appears in Barsana. And other times she also appears in the, um, what was it called? Uh, Ravel, which is near Gokul. Varsana and Nandagram and Sankalpas, Krishna appears in Nandagram, Radharani and Varsana. And Sankalpas, Krishna appears in Gokul and Radharani and Ravel. So they're always like this, side by side, inseparable. So this is the third line. And then, Syat Kinkari Bhavatum Eva Mama Abhilasha. This is the theme, because remember, the title of this class is Manjri Seva, or Manjri Bhav, which means ultimately Bhav and Seva. They're inseparable. If you love someone, you serve someone. Bhav means love. So Manjri Seva and Radhara Sudhanidhi. You gave one of those books? The book you gave? Yes, we Yeah. Yeah. The, um, so that's the theme. It's not a new line for us, but we're being reminded again and again. Syat kin kari bhavitam eva mam abhilasha. Abhilash, most people know what that means. Mam means me. So this is the last line. Let my desire awaken only for Radharani's confidential maid service. Bhavitam means let it be. Uh, like us too, us too, or bhavatu. Kinkri bhavatum eva mabilasha. So this is my desire, Radharani. I've glorified you and tried to very honestly and sincerely and lovingly glorify you. And of course, glorifying Radharani means to glorify Krishna. So that's like someone's asking a question, oh, we're aiming our service towards Radharani. No, we're aiming our service towards Radha and Krishna. And they're inseparable. If you're serving Radharani, you're serving Krishna. And sometimes the manjaris are serving Krishna to serve Radharani. <laughs> when, when it's, so it's, sometimes people are misunderstanding. Oh, those that are pursuing Raghunuga Bhakti and Mantri Bhav, they're only emphasizing Radharani, massaging Radharani's hair and brushing Radharani's hair. They, they, they want to be Radharani's maidservants and they'll do whatever she wants. But Radharani wants the mantris also to brush Radharani's hair and bathe, bathe them. You can read in Govinda Lila Marita in the Pratakal, Pratakyam, Seva, where the Krishna is taking a bath in Nandagram before his breakfast, after milking the cows and inducing the bulls to fight and wrestling with the boys after they milk the cows at sunrise. And he comes in to take a bath. And then it's described there that all his house servants are there, Payoda and uh, Patrak, Raktak Patrak, all these different servants are there 
to uh, bathe him and brush his hair and massage his body. But it also says there in Govinda Lila Amrita and also Bhava Namrita, many mandris are also there. Young girls are there, the 12, 13. They're bathing Krishna. And uh, they're and Krishna's playing with them. So they're Radharani's maidservants, but they've gone there early to bathe Krishna on her order, and uh, they're fully serving Krishna. They could be also, some Andris are back in Barsan or Yavat bathing Radharani. And in some days, okay, today you go bathe Krishna. Oh, okay. So really, Mandris are all around us. You know, the Sakis, the, the coward boys, they're only serving Krishna, <laughs> and they're also serving Radharani. Some of them, and they're all serving Radharani. I mean, ultimately, 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 directly or indirectly, every Brijbasi, and even animals, birds, etc., is serving the cause of bringing Radha and Krishna together. So ultimately, every Brijbasi is serving Krishna and Radha. But your, but your percentage or your angle of vision may be leaning more towards Krishna or more towards Radha. For example, Mother Yashoda. She's also serving Radharani, but she's serving Krishna more. Because she's not the direct mother of Radharani, but the Shastras say that Yashoda loves Radharani as much as she loves Krishna. She gives her gifts and she embraces her and smells her head and she always says, Oh, I w you should marry my son. You should live in this house with me. I want you to stay here. Why, why, did, you, why did fate arrange, why did providence arrange that you married Abhimanyu? That is my bad luck. So, so much. And she gives gifts and saris and, and indirectly she arranges for, uh, indirectly she arranges for Krishna to meet Radharani all day long. Because even she tries in the morning when Krishna wants to take all the cows out. Then Yashoda pleads with him and says, listen, you're the, you're the, you're the Rajendra Nandan. You're Rajendra Nandan. You're the Nandan, you're the son of Brajendra. You're the son of the king of Vrindavan, of Braj, the king of all of Braj, Brajendra Nandan, Shamsundra. We ha you're the prince, the Yuvaraj. We have thousands and thousands of servants and young boys who can take out our lakhs of cows. You don't have to do this. And why do you go barefoot? And why don't you take an umbrella? And Krishna says, no, no, it's our duty. I am a Gwal, I am an Abhira, Abhira caste. And uh, we have to take care of the cows. And I want to go personally. No, no, you don't have to go. You stay in the house. You play with your friends in the house and in the courtyard. You don't need to toil and run all over the mountainsides and run all over the fields and step on all these dry thorns and, and, and seeds and burrs and stickers and scratch yourself. I see when you come back in the afternoon, you have bites on your neck and scratches and so many things from the coward boys wrestling hard and running through the bushes and shrubs and undergrowth of the forest. And then Krishna says, no, no, Mother Yashoda, it's actually really important. <laughs> I really have to go take care of the cows. <laughs> so he's very insistent. Krishna is very insistent that he has to go. Why does he have to go? Not to take care of the cows and not to play leapfrog, leapfrog with the coward boys and play hide and seek with the coward boys. He wants to meet Radharani at Radhakun for six hours. So this is a pretext Taking out the cows is a pretext, an excuse to meet with Radha, so he can meet with Radharani, which is his primary purpose of his every movement and activity. So then, that, so then finally, it showed us she could. She's the mother. He's only eight years old. He was seven years old when he lifted Govardhan. Krishna was eight years old when he danced with Radharani in the Rasa dance. He's not a big man. <laughs> He's eight years old and he's running all over Brudge, 40 kilometers this way, 40 kilometers that way, 50 kilometers that way. So she's worried, she's concerned, but she's mellow. She's, uh, she's not a forceful mother, a dictatorial mother. So she, he, Krishna says, oh really, I'll come back. And, and then she appoints so many guards to look after Krishna, elder coward boys, and carry bows and arrows and protect him from demons. And, and then she tells other senior coward boys, make sure my Lala drinks sufficient water, make sure he eats all his meals on time, and make sure he comes home on time and doesn't wait too long out there and look after him and let me know if anything happens. So she very carefully tries to protect him in every possible way. But finally she accedes, accedes to his request and says, all right, Lala, 
and you go with the callous and coward voice. So in that way, even Yashoda is serving Radharani by enabling her to meet Krishna. So in this way, everyone's serving. So this is the conclusion that, that he's saying, let my desire awaken only for Radharani's confidential service. Now we can discuss the, uh, so the points of the verse, basically, uh, Radharani's form, we're describing Radharani's form, Radharani's qualities, Radharani's birthplace, and the Sadaka's prayer for seva. So the first part of the verse, it says, Purnanarag. Purnanarag Rasamurti. That Radharani is the, is, the, is, is the form or full of const, or constant love. Personification of complete loving attachment. The Acharyas are saying, this is how much Radharani is attached to Krishna, how much she loves Krishna. From every, from, from the top of her head, every single hair on Radharani's beautiful head, which of course is black, <laughs> like Krishna, Shamsundar, because she's always thinking, one Acharya has said that Radharani's thinking of Krishna with every single thought, and we know that our minds produce millions of thoughts every hour, thousands and thousands of thoughts when we're sleeping or waking. So many thoughts come and go like waves on the ocean the ocean of the mental, the, the waves on the mental ocean, waves of thought, waves of desire, and hankering and lamenting. So many waves are coming. So every wave of thought, you know, every single thought of Radharani is sham, 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 sham. So from every direction of Radharani's head, all kinds of thoughts are coming to serve Krishna, love Krishna, please Krishna, serve Krishna, love Krishna, please Krishna, serve Krishna, love Krishna, please. And all those thoughts are coming out of Radharani's hair and, and as hair on her head, her transcendental hair. And it's getting longer and longer because she has more and more desires, unlimited desires to please and serve Krishna. And this is the nature of bhakti, devotion, Krishna bhakti. Radha Govinda Bhakti. That when one has devotion, when Bhakti Devi comes and moves into one's heart, Dikshakali, Dikshakali Atma Samarpan, then Bhakti, the Bhakti Lata Bija, at the time of Diksha, a guru sends Bhakti Devi into the heart. He says, Listen, Bhakti Devi, I'm offering you a beautiful place to stay. It's the heart of this devotee this devotee lady or devotee man. And uh, I've prepared this heart. I've trained them, I've given them shiksha. And I trained them in the siddhanta of Gode Vaishnavism and the maryada and achar behavior and protocol of the Vaishnav life, the Vaishnav sadachar. And I taught them and they're very sincere and serious and somewhat purified. So please, I'm inviting you to move into this heart and take your resonance there, bhakti, bhakti nivas. Sometimes they have houses like that. People call their house bhakti nivas. Nivas means house. Or they say bhakti dam. This is bhakti dam. So this, our hearts at the time of diksha become a nivas for devotion. And then, of course, when a baby is born in the house, he grows and grows and grows. So when bhakti comes as a seed in the heart, Ramanda Brahma Tekon Bhagyavanaji, Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai, Bhakti Lata Bija. Pai means gives, or excuse me, Pai means receive, the word P-A-Y-A -A means receive. One receives the seed of bhakti. This is the BBT translation, and it's correct. Ramanda Brahma Tekon Bhagavan, Kon Bhagavan, some someone who knows it's no it's no way to tell, but some very fortunate person, Kon Bhagavan, Brahmanda Brahmate, Brahmate means to wander, to wander. One wanders throughout all the universes, and someday, somehow, somehow or other, Brahmanda Brahmate Kon Bhagavan Jeev, 
he becomes very, con means who? I don't know, anybody. It's causeless. There's no reason, there's no cause, there's no rhyme, there's no reason. It's just causeless mercy. Ahoytuki kripa. Ramanda Brahma Tekon, Bhagavan Jeev, Guru Krishna Prasade Pai. If he receives the mercy of Krishna, of Krishna, then he will receive Guru Krishna Prasade Pai, Bhakti Lata He will receive by Bhagavan Kripa or or also including or by the mercy of Guru Saru Guru Saru Kripa, he will see he will re, Pai Bhakti Lata. He will Bhakti uh, vision, not the beach. He will receive the seed of bhakti. So that's diksha. And then it grows and grows. So Radharani, she's just growing as the devotion grows. The point I'm making is when bhakti sits in the heart and develops and grows and expands within her heart, then along with it, we expand our desires to serve Krishna. We can't, no one can say, except Radharani, that they have as many desires to serve Krishna as they have hairs on their heads. Hairs on their head. We have thousand, thousand. How many hairs on your head? Thousand, thousands. If you're not bald. <laughs> if you're not bald or old or so. But most people have lots of hair. So every hair is a desire. So from the top of her head to the bottom of her beautiful lotus feet. From every hair on Radharani's beautiful head to the effulgence of her dazzling toenails. Radharani's dif divine form is made of Mahabhav. What is Mahabhav? It includes the sum total of all degrees and manifestations of Sneha, Man, Pranaya, Rag, Anurag, Bhav, and Mahabhav. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna's Kaviraj glorifies Radharani and Adi four is Krishna Mai, Krishna Mai, Krishna Jara, Antare Bihire, Yaha Yaha Netra Pore, Taha Krishna Spore, Krishna Mai, Krishna Yara, Antare Bahire, Yaha Yaha Netra Pore, Taha Krishna Spore. Srimati Radhika, who is also known as Krishna Mai, means that Radharani is saturated Antare Bahire. Antare Bahire. Radharani is saturated inside and out with Krishna. Wherever Radharani looks, she sees Krishna. Not only Radha's form or body is made of Mahabhav, but all of Srimati's dresses, her ornaments, her unguents, and sandalwood paste, and kasturi, and camphor, every, all the different unguents, and oils, and creams, and paste she applies to her body, are also made of transcendental love for Sham. This is the meaning of Purna Anurag. <laughs> Purna Anurag, Arasa Murti. Tadil Latavam, Tadil Latavam. Purnana Raga Rasamurti Tadilatabham. Now the second glorification. So that's her form. I mentioned that there's four points in this verse. Radha Rupam, Radha Gunam, Radha Janam, Janam Stan, and Radha Seva. Seva Vilash. The aspiration for Radha Seva. So certainly it's a wonderful way to spend Adikmas, Purushotamat, every day hearing about the Nam Rup and Guna and Leela of Radharani. And, oh, we're only concentrating on Radharani, what about Krishna? Is there any better way to please Krishna than this? There's, this, in this, there's a famous book in India, it's called Tulsi Das's Ramayan. The actual name of the book is Ram, Manas, uh, Ram Charitamanas. Bhagavan Ramachandra Charitamanas. It's, the, it's the, uh, written by Sant Tulsi Das about 500 years ago. And in that book, he tells one verse, he says, if anyone is speaking, if anyone is speaking my book or chanting this Ramayan, my Tulsi Das is Ramayan, Mana, uh, Ram uh, Charitamanas, then Hanuman, 
Bhakta Hanuman, Dasirati, Dasirati Bhakta Hanuman, he will come to that pandal or to that sangha or to that pravachan. He will come there and sit in the audience or he'll sit right next to the speaker and listen to the Ram Katha, Ram Katamritam. That's how powerful. So the discussion is about Ram and Sita and their leelas. And of course, that involves Hanuman at some point also in the battle and other, other places. So the idea is one is speaking Ramayana, glorifying Sita and Ram and Lakshman, primarily Ram. It's the Ram book about Ram's charita. But that attracts the devotee that Hanuman comes wherever Hanuman is. If Hanuman's in Kim Purusha Loka or if his ha Hanuman is in Prakat, Prakat Ayodhya here on this planet, or Hanuman is in the Yodhya Dham in Vaikuntha, he immediately comes to that place, whether in India or anywhere around the world, wherever they're speaking Ramayana, he sits there and listens. Of course, if Hanuman is in the Sangha and the assembly, then everyone becomes blessed with pure devotion, pure dasyarati. So in the same way, this is the month of Purushottam. And this is, according to Skanda Puran, the Ishtadev, the Ishtadevata, for this month of Purushottam are Radha and Krishna Yuga. During this month, one should worship Radha and Krishna. So we're worshiping, there's Maryada Purushottam, Ram, then there's, there's Lila Purushottam. Lila Purushottam could be Dwarkadish, but then there's Madhurya Lila Purushottam. Madhurya Lila Purushottam is only Krishna, Purnatam Bhagavan Sri Krishna Vrindavan. So the ultimate Purushottam, Bhagavan, to worship the Purush Uttam, the Purnatam, Purnatam Bhagavan, and the ultimate topmost Purushottam, to worship in Purushottam month is Krishna. And Vrindavan. And Krishna means worship with Radharani. So we're sitting here and we're hearing so much about Radharani and glorifying Radharani and Krishna, of course, in relation to Krishna. Some of the verses, half the verses about Krishna, half the verses about Radharani. So every verse, wherever you find Radharani, you find Krishna. So if there, there's a verse about Radharani, then you can also find Krishna. Like we said, Radharani is Jyoti Param. But then we, the next word was Bhagavato Rati Madrahasyam. Krishna Bhagavan, Bhagavan Sri Krishna is Rati. So Radharani is, she's the abode of that Rati. She's a recipient of Krishna's love. So there we, wherever you have Radha, you must have Krishna. Just like Gita. Every, there's 700 verses in Gita. And Krishna is speaking, Arjuna is listening. Arjuna is speaking, Krishna is listening. But actually every verse is about Krishna and Arjuna are in every verse. And then you want to take it further because it's Upadesh for the Buddha Jivas. So then every verse also is for us. That's why it's such a timeless book. Every verse is speaking Krishna's in every verse, Arjuna's in every verse, and also the Buddha Jivas, the conditioned souls. That's in Bhagavad Gita. So here in these verses of Radharas Sudhaniti, it's Radharas Sudhaniti and it's Krishna Ras Sudhaniti. So everywhere, wherever Radha is, whether Radha is there in song, then Krishna will be there. Whether Radha is there in poetry, then Krishna will be there. Wherever there's Radha, there's Krishna. Wherever there's Krishna, there's Radha. Now this is the... So we can, we can imagine, we don't have the eyes to see, but by sincerely hearing, coming to hear about Radharani and Krishna and the seva of Radharani and the mantri bhav to cultivate a Raghunuga sadhana, we can understand by the basis of Shastra and maybe the experience of some also that Krishna himself is sitting here in this room right now, invisible to our uh, prim, prima devoid eyes, but he's listening to the Kata. At least we should think like that. When we're speaking Hari Kata, if we're speaking Hari Kata, we should think Radharani is sitting and listening. If we're speaking Radhakata, we should think that Krishna is listening. Because they're everywhere. Krishna says in Gita, Sarvato Panipadam Tat, Sarvato Kshikshiromakam, Sarvatam Shrutimala Ke, Tishtan, 
whatever. He's telling there everywhere are my eyes and eyes and ears. Sarvato, sarvato shi, everywhere are my faces, everywhere are my eyes and ears, everywhere are my hands and legs. So that means everywhere. Everywhere means everywhere. Certainly, especially in Radhika, and <laughs> especially with Krishna. There's so many verses that say that Krishna never takes a step out of Vrindavan. Krishna may take a step out of Delhi. He sometimes would come and stay for several months in Hastinapur, Indraprastha, Indraprastha with the Pandavas, stay for a month or two or even three, four. But he left and went back to Dwarka. I never read in any Shastra where Krishna never takes a step out of Delhi. But I have read in Puranas in many places, also in Bhagavatam, because they use present tense verbs when they're describing Krishna's pastimes, that Krishna is eternally in Vrindavan, and he never takes a step. Vrindavanam prityaja paramekam nagachati. Vrindavanam prityaja paramekam nagachati. So Krishna never takes a step out of Vrindavan. So surely, uh, we, we, it's, it's also a fact, Krishna is everywhere, if we can realize it, and where Krishna is, Radharani is, and Krishna never takes a step out of Vrindavan. So certainly anywhere in Vrindavan, where we're speaking Radhari, Radhari Katamritam, and Radha and Krishna will be sitting there listening in invisible forms. What to speak of anywhere else? Because Krishna's Gita is for the universe. Krishna's teachings in the Gita are all about the universe. Abrahma Bhuvana Loka, Punar Avati Narjana. He's discussing there from the highest planet in the material world, Brahma Loka, all the way down to the lowest. All places are places of misery where there's repeated birth and death. This is in the Bhagavad Gita, Abrahma Bhuvana Loka. Punar Janma is a repeated birth and death. So the Gita is a, universe, a book about the universe, about the jivas all over the universe. They go up, they go down, they, they take birth here. So therefore, Krishna is everywhere, and wherever we speak, Radha and Krishna Gita sincerely and purely, and try to hear purely and sincerely. Tulsi Devi, we see, oh yes, Tulsi's here. But Tulsi's always in Vrindavan. Wherever Tulsi is, that's Vrindavan. Padma Puran says that the dirt in the Tulsi plant is Braja Raj. Even if the Tulsi plant is in Ukraine, or Poland, or Mexico, or South America, or Russia, this is not dirt from the nursery in Moscow. And once the dirt is off, once Tulsi grows in the dirt, it's not dirt, it's Braja Raj. This is all over the world. So this is the transcendental quality of the spiritual vastu, tadit vastu, chit vastu. It's called chit vastu. Puranas say that one drop of Ganga water put, makes the whole water Ganga. I remember when we were in Sankirtan, we, had a, we were staying in a house in Las Vegas, and work and selling Prabhupada's Bhagavatams in the in the airport there in Las Vegas. A group of brahmacharis, we had a temple there with some pictures of Panchatattva. And seven, eight brahmacharis and we that was our outpost and there was a swimming pool because everybody's if you rent a house it automatically comes with a swimming pool. When you fly in the airport fly in a plane to land in Las Vegas I wouldn't go there unless you want to sell Prabhupada's books. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a real Maya, Maya place. But when you fly in the airplane, look out the window, all you see is little blue, little black roof and blue swimming pool. <laughs> Hundreds, thousands of swimming The black roof of the house, the tar and roof, whatever, the chata, and then you see this blue swimming pool. Not very big. Our pool is about... 25 feet across and 30 feet long or so. Hardly can go anywhere. But uh, when we went to Mayapur festival, Navadri festival, or Garunga's appearance, we brought Ganga Jal back with the idea that we'll put that in the swimming pool so when we just swim over there, we're swimming in the Ganga and meditating on Gaur Lila. And that's a fact, a few drops of water added to any water and make that water Ganga. So I know many devotees, they have a bhav. They have a bhav for Braj Lila and Gaur Lila. So how do they express that bhav? 
in their kitchen, some of these devotees I know, they have small little vials, small little glass jars. And in the glass jar, there is one, one little like vitamin bottle or whatever, homeopathic drop-by-drop drop bottle type of thing, dropper type, eyedropper. One bottle they have Ganga Jal, one bottle they have Yamuna Jal, another bottle they have Radha Jal. So whenever they buy a bottle of water, or if they have a water purifier, there's some collecting basin or some collecting barton or pot or pan. The water goes to the purifier and drips into something, usually, or there's some storage, storage container inside the water purifier. So they they put drops when if they buy bottled water, every time they buy a bottle, they put a few drops of Ganga, a few drops of Yamuna, and a few drops of Radhakund. With the bhav that all this water that I'm drinking or serving to my friends, everyone will be drinking Garangas, Garangas Ganga and Radha Krishna's Yamuna and Radha Mata's Radhakund, Jal. They're not drinking Bisleri, they're not drinking Kent water or Aquaguard water or this, that, the other thing, some water filter. So this is the bhav of devotees that want everything to be connected to Krishna. Nice idea. So this is Radharani. She's Krishna Mai Krishna Jari. Krishna Mai Krishna Jara Antare Bahire. Yaha Yaha Netra Pore Taha Krishna Spore. She Radhika. Srimati Radhika is also known as Krishna Mai. Why? Krishna Mai Radha means that Radharani is saturated and drenched and drowning. It's completely made inside and out of Krishna. Not only Radha's form or body is made of Mahabhav, but all of her, her dresses, her dresses, her choli, her kanchuli, her sari, her arana, her, ut, her everything, her rings, her bangles, her bracelets, her necklaces, her waist belts, her kinkini, her nupura, it's all made of Mahabhav all made of, she, Radharani walks and her nupura, her ankle bells jingle. Why do they jingle? Because they're made of mahabhav. And what, what is it jingling? They, they jingle as service to Krishna. Ladies wear ankle bells and they go tink, 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 tink. And they just, they like it or their husbands like it or whatever. It's part of the married woman's uh, ornaments according to Vedic Hindu Dharma. But Radharani, every ornament on her body is vibrating is chanting Krishna's name and singing Krishna's name and melodiously sounding for the pleasure of Krishna. And she has, every, everything is made of Mahabhav. So that's, uh, we'll stop there and we'll take questions for a few minutes because class is almost over. We'll continue tomorrow to discuss how Radharani is Rasamurti. Now this is the, uh, we discussed this first Word, Purna Anuraga. <laughs> First word of the verse, chat, verse 41. And this verse is describing desiring Radha's service. This is part one. Purna Anuraga Rasa Murti Tadilatabam. Jyoti Param Bhagavatur Rati Mad Rahasyam. Yat Prada Rasti Kripaya Vrishabhano Gehe. Syat Kari Bhavatum Eva Mama Abhilasha. I only desire to be the maidservant of that supreme effulgence, Radha, who is the very form of passionate love, Radha, who shines like a lightning, like a vine, like a lata, creeper of lightning strikes, Radha, who is the only abode of intimate love, Rati Rahasya, and Radha, who has mercifully appeared in the house of Prashabana Maharaj, that Radha, I want to be the maidservant of. That's the translation by Advaita Dasri and then Sri Dasarath. Sutta Dasri says, Radhika is the personification of complete loving attachment. Purnana Raga Rasamurti. Radharani, her very form is like an, an aura, a jyoti, a radiance, an aura of lightning creepers. And Radharani's form is the topmost effulgence of all effulgences. 
And what is a qua that's the rupam of Radharani. Murti means rupam, and these are qualities of a rupam. And then what's a what's one of her what's I mean these are her this just descriptions of rupam. Now here's a description of a quality of Radharani. Radharani is the Bhagavatam Ratimad. Radharani is the object of affection for Bhagavan Purushottam Sri Krishna and Rahasyam. Radharani is the most secret of mysteries. And Kripaya Brishabhano Gehe, she has mercifully appeared in Brishabhano's house. Let my desire awaken only for her confidential service. So we'll continue there tomorrow discussing Rasamurti. Some questions? Questions on the verse, only on the verse today. If anyone has any questions, other questions, they can come on Sunday. We have satsang on Sunday and from 4 to 6 in the evening time. This is our regular uh, schedule throughout the year. We're busy. Everyone's busy in this world. As you know, ask yourself, are you busy? And you'll say, yes, I'm very busy. <laughs> ask a five-year-old if he's busy, five-year-old boy or girl, yes, I'm very busy. So hopefully everyone's busy either making money, making friends, or serving Krishna. <laughs> These are two things you should be busy. Busy spreading, spreading love and making friends, or busy making money, or busy serving Radha and Krishna and Vaishnavas and Guru. So most of us are trying to be busy serving Guru Vaishnavas, Vaishnav Guru and Radha and Krishna, Garanga Mahaprabhu. So that Sunday, 4 to 6, if anyone has questions, you write them down. If they come to your mind in the class, you write them down, you can come at that time. But otherwise, during class, I wanted to stay on the point so we enrich the preparation, enrich the offering. Like we're, I, we're all together, we're cooking a beautiful offering here. Say we're all together in the kitchen, we're making a big pot of sweet rice. It's so big, it's 500 kilos of milk and, and takes, and all of us have our, we're all stirring it together. It is stirred every so often. We all put our hands on this huge wooden handle. It's 3,000 liters of milk and 50 kilos of rice or whatever it is. And we can't even turn it one man. So all of us have our hands on this large paddle or stick and we're stirring around this huge pot. So then a question is asked. So a question is like someone says, oh, we're stirring this nice sweet rice? I have a question. So if that question is on the class, it's the same as if that person who is helping churn and keep that sweet rice cooking slowly and from burning, as if he's saying, oh, I have, I have, a, I have a tw 10 kilos of raisins in my pocket. Can we throw that in there? Yes, yes, throw it in the sweet rice. And then another, qu that's, so that's called a good question. It improves the preparation. Now another person says, I, I, have, a, I have a good question. I have, I have 30 kilos of cashews. I want to put in the sweet rice we're, off, we're cooking for Radha Krishna. Okay, throw that in. So that's the second good question, which enhances the preparation, increases the value of it, increases the taste of it, and the power of it. Now another, another person in the class asks a question, third question, only on the verse and on the class. And he says, oh, Oh, speaker, by the way, I have, I have one kilo of uh, elaichi. I have one kilo of elaichi, cardamom. Can I put that in the sweet rice, this kheer that we're cooking? Yeah, I'll throw that in. So that's the third good question on the class, on the discussion, which improves the whole mixture. So this is the proper asking of questions. Someone should, because... Everyone benefits. When it's all said and done, we take our hands off the paddle. We don't have to stir anymore. The sweet rice is cooked. Then we offer it to Radha and Krishna. Then we offer it to Guru and Vaishnavas. Then we all sit down and we all take the sweet rice and say, what do you think? How does it taste? Oh, it's, it's fantastic. It's really fantastic. It's so good. Yes, because you put, you, you know why it's good? Because you put your cardamom inside, your elaichi. You know why it's good? Because you put your, your cashews in. You know why it's good? Because you put your kishmish or raisin there. So it made it sweeter and richer and tastier and more healthy and valuable and pleasing and satisfying ultimately for Radha and Krishna, of course, or primarily. So this is, this is the proper question should make it. When you walk away from a class where the proper questions are asked, you should feel like you've just had a, drank a big pot of sweet rice.
<laughs> but if you're in a class and it's very sweet and very nice and all of a sudden someone says, well, then it's, it spoils the preparation. Like everyone's cooking sweet rice and somebody comes and says, oh, let me add this. And they add 10 kilos of salt. Ah, what are you doing? That's salt. You, you just ruined, you just offended all this milk and all this rice. You destroyed the whole thing, you stupid. What are you doing? That's the same as asking an a, a offhanded question or some question that has no, it's not on the verse. And that person is actually doing kata aparad. It's called kata aparad, or to speak of Vaishnava aparad. That we're making an, because a class, cooking, I mean, a class is an offering to Radha and Krishna, to Guru and Radha and Krishna. And so everyone should work together to make a nice offering to Radha and Krishna. Do you agree? Yes. You come and try to stay awake. Okay, it's hot. You fall asleep. I also attend the class and I sometimes fall asleep. I'm sorry to say because it's so hot. It's on the fourth floor of a building and there's no AC. And it's really hot. And, you know, and, I, and I only eat once a day, so I just finish eating. Right, it's an evening class, so I just finish eating. So sometimes I nod out for a second. I feel bad, but, you know. I'm a human being, but we should try. We, you know, I bring my notebook and I have you know 40 pages of notes. I'm taking notes, so we we should try to be awake. So everyone plays their part. So there's nothing more, nothing more inspiring than to sit with. Even if you sit with one person that's eager to hear, that's all. A year or two, or one. If he comes, one, I'll speak the same way. You know, because he's he's eager to hear. I don't. Uh, whether one comes or ten, I'd rather have one that wants to hear than 500 and 250 are sleeping. <laughs> Which may be my fault or whatever, I can't say. But, <laughs> or, and the voice is very you know, melodic or makes everyone fall asleep. Because we're just, it's like a seminar, there's only a handful of people, we're not having some very exaggerated, dramatic delivery before a large audience. It's or sitting in a gufa in a basement in the middle of the summer in Radhakund trying to hear about the glories of Radha and Krishna and our eternal service. There aren't thousands and millions of people here. It's very, very rare. Radhi, Radhi. Radha Rasamnidi ki jai 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 shi Radhe Radha Rani, Go, Radha Govinda Dev Ki Jai, Shama Kunda Ki Jai, Radha Kunda Ki Jai, Purushottam Adikatmas Bratta Ki Jai, Prabhupada Saraswati Ki Jai, Jai Jai Shri Radhe Sham.